Yo, 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 I'm Josh Paulson, and I want to talk to you about do I need to refactor? If you're looking at your code and you're going, oh my goodness, it's a mess. Oh my goodness, I need to refactor. For one thing, that can be a very common experience in different cases, but there is a level of, uh, I, I want to be careful using the word clean because a lot of people think of Uncle Bob's clean code and that's what they think I'm referring to, but I just mean um, making your code nicer to read, making it more readable. I'll do another video on readability and what that is and what it's not later on in a few weeks, but um, but I just want to talk about, do you need to refactor right now? It could be that your code can be a lot cleaner. Again, not talking about Uncle Bob's clean code, just could be a lot nicer, more readable. Uh, but is this something to actually worry about right now? So I want to bring up a few different questions that can help you with identifying if you need to refactor. And I'm going to use my best friend, Notepad++. If Notepad++ isn't rude, Notepad++, please, please be nice. Okay, this will work. And I'm going to show you some of my own code as an example, because I have some code that I think it needs refactoring, but there's also a priority aspect of it, right? Like, hey, it might be important to refactor. It might be good to refactor, but is it important right now? Is it good for me to focus on that right now? Or should I focus on eating more chicken nuggets? Okay, so do I need to refactor? So I'm, if it sounds like I'm reading it all, I apologize because I am reading a little bit. And then you might be like, why don't you write a blog post? And it's because I don't want to get out of my face. Well, you're not in my face. My face is in my face. Yeah. Um, so do I need to refactor? So the first question is, does this code solve my current problems? And this is important to note that it is my current problems because your current problems can change, right? If you go two weeks in a project or even a day, your needs might change because, hey, there's a new feature request that just came up. Hey, um, I thought that this was going to solve the problem, but we've learned something new or we have to switch out uh, an external package that we were using or whatever. We have to switch engines, whatever. It's just your problems can change and they can change on a dime. And so and something else that I also want to bring up is performance is a problem. Some people will look at it and go, oh, performance, who cares? Performance is a legit problem. If your code doesn't solve your performance problems, and if you have no performance metrics or targets, uh, <laughs> you need you need something because uh, you probably don't want your app to crash on, well, it's not that it would crash necessarily, but you, you don't want it to, um, I, I've seen uh, projects get negative reviews and very negative feedback based on performance that nobody thought mattered. and that hurts the project, right? So if your goal is to have a project that succeeds, you need to have some sort of performance metric. And if your performance metric is it runs on the most powerful computer in the world, at least you have a performance metric now. Um, that's a dumb example. But anyway, performance is a problem. Does the code solve your current problem? So let me give you, um, actually, I'm going to run through the questions. Then I'm going to run through some of my own code that I know is messy, that I know needs some refactoring and just kind of go through those questions and show you some of the process. So does this code solve my current problems? Another question is, is this code difficult to work with? Now, of course, this can be a very personal uh, question because for me, difficult code might be what is easy for you. And some of that can be based on who wrote it. Hey, is this easy for me? Well, I wrote it, so it might be considered easier. Is it, uh, is it something that, uh, and specifically I wrote, is it difficult to work within? Because maybe it's really easy to hook into. Maybe it's really easy to call it. And so, okay, but is it hard to work within? Is it hard to work within the code itself? If it's hard to hook up to, then that also matters. But, um, but in general, when we're looking at refactoring the question about time, where it really matters for time is, is it difficult to work within? It's annoying, but if you really need to, you can have function aliases, or you can have a summary comments that explain what things do, or you can do a pretty quick rename in most software. So that part's not as big of a deal. Um, but is it difficult to work within this part of the project? If so, then it might be worth refactoring. But the third, uh, the third question is probably the most important one out of all of these, and that is, will I need to work in this code soon? And soon might mean in five minutes, it might mean right now, but will I need to work in this code soon? Because it might be that, hey, you know what? This code solves my current problems and it's difficult to work within, but I don't need to touch it at all. It doesn't matter. In which case it might not be worth refactoring. Now, that does not mean for sure it's not worth refactoring. And again, one of the things that I want to kind of emphasize here, performance is a problem. So if your code is not hitting your performance metrics and you're like, oh my goodness, this part of the code is the problem. Yeah, refactoring is a valid thing to look at. And um, 
I, I do want to briefly touch on difference between refactoring and rewrite. Usually when people use the two terms, if they're talking about rewrite, they mean deleting a part of the project and starting over. If they're talking about refactoring, they generally mean taking what's there and massaging it, reworking it, editing what's there. Um, but people can use the terms interchangeably. I don't want to get hung up on that. I don't think it's worth getting hung up on that. Just make sure uh, for this context, what I'm talking about in general is more so the refactoring aspect of taking what's there and massaging it, adjusting it, altering it in order to get the uh, out in order to get the results that you want, whether that is as far as performance, functionality, or just being able to work in the darn thing. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some of my own code that I know is messy and that I know needs some work and uh, talk about these questions in that context. So I have the server manager for my Twitch tools and the Twitch tools are what you see on screen. That let me drag this guy around that let me play different sound effects and stuff like that. Let me play music in the background. Um, I'm not going to show all the functions right now that I kind of want to show off, but, um, but the things that I've got here, I've got a server manager and I've got a module socket manager. Now the module socket manager has been the messiest part of the code base for quite a while. I've cleaned it up a lot, but it's still a mess. It's still all over the place. And, um, and there are things that I can see immediately that I could adjust in these different files. And I also know some things about the ways that they connect and relate to each other that, um, that also raise questions. So the first thing is, does this code solve my current problems? Now, if I look at this, the answer is yes, it does solve my current problems. And so if I just stop there, I'm like, yeah, you know what? It solves my current problems. I don't really need to edit it right now. Yes, I would like to. Yes, it could be better. I'm not asking whether or not it could be better. I'm not asking whether or not it could be improved. It just, does it solve my current problems? Yes, it does. It's solved my current problems. I would like to improve it, but it's solved my current problems. Um, and I'm going to be a bit more specific. The things that I'm looking at are this and this in relation to each other. Um, and the reason why I care about these two parts of the code is because they seem kind of redundant. In this case, I've got what I call pseudo handlers, which is a way to call a URL in my app. And instead of actually going to that URL, which is non-existent, it actually calls a function and returns some data. And so it's sort of it's sort of like calling a PHP page, except this is JavaScript, so there are no PHP pages, and it's just returning data instead. But that's redundant because I have sockets and I have logic to make a call to the server on the socket, wait for a response to that specific message, and then perform logic based on the response. And so this is a redundant system. It doesn't need to be here anymore. This over here seems like a bit of a duplicate of this and I have another uh, listener set up on top of it for functionality that anybody can call and I might be able to combine it so uh, so a lot of it is that I just have these redundant systems and I think that I could make it more flexible and would give myself more options make it easier if I was able to combine some of the systems and that doesn't seem like a stretch I would have to look more into it it doesn't seem like a stretch it seems like that uh, if they, it might be that that isn't practical. I'd have to dig more into it, but it doesn't seem like a stretch. So does this code call, solve my current problems? The answer is yes. Is it difficult to work within? It is a bit because there become these weird, uh, I get these weird questions of, do I use this system or do I use this system? Or, and I'll just pull up the module and kind of show the other piece. Um, or do I use, there's this, uh, it's not named well right now, but there's this other system where it ends up calling in module actions and it runs module actions um, based on commands that are passed in via JSON. And so like, why isn't get module settings just a module action? Why isn't get global settings just a module action? Uh, and module actions is, so there's like these three different setups for getting data from the server and that's kind of gross and it's kind of confusing. So is it difficult to work within? I would say it's not difficult in the sense of hard to write the logic but it's confusing and it doesn't seem like the best setup. Will I need to work in this code soon? Is then the final question that I would look at here. Well, it kind of depends on where I, it depends on what I prioritize, right? If my goal is to, uh, so one of my goals has been to improve this logic so that I can use it as a core for projects that I'm doing on Fiverr or with other people. And so then the core logic becomes really important. It becomes really important to make easy for me to use, easy for me to extend because somebody might have a different need or I need to disable features for this one person. And so this raises some questions. Um, will I need to work in this code soon? I probably will. It's probably
probably going to be an annoying case. And so then what I would look at is, okay, well, what steps do I actually take to refactor it? What do I want to prioritize? Pseudo handler would definitely be a piece to go. How do I start moving things over? What does that look like? In some cases, what refactoring looks like is it looks like refactoring within one file in a way that you can transfer it into another file. And sometimes based on your timelines, like if you can take just a little bit of time to refactor over here, then you can take that time and move it over. I don't think that it's a, it's a good time to get into all of that. I feel like that's probably going a little bit off the focus here. That's basically just showing you my code and being like, yeah, my code uh, more. but. That's an example of just going through these questions and refactoring is a very valid thing to do. I, I think that I've I've seen cases where it is um, the entire project. I think that for myself, if I am working on a project, I really like going through the refactoring process and trying to improve it. Some of that is a part of learning. And I think that for a long time, I just never really felt confident that I was hitting any targets. Once I was under a good senior programmer for a bit, who I've still talked with a bit, um, that helped me a lot because I finally got some systems that I felt confident in that I didn't feel the need to change all the time because it never solved my problems. It was a lot more cohesive. So, um, so in some cases, refactoring can be a result of just not knowing how to solve problems well and needing some input from some uh, good senior leadership. Uh, in some cases, the refactoring is just your needs of the project change, totally valid, that happens. Ideally, you've uh, set it up in a way where it's easy to make those changes. And uh, if you realize that it's not, then the will I need to work in this code soon becomes pretty evident. And it's worth, it's worth looking at if you have the time. And of course, if you're looking at a personal project, then it's kind of arbitrary of, is this the time now? But, but do you have the time to work on this practically? Is this going to help you move towards your goals? So I hope this helps you out with looking at your code and figuring out if, when you need to refactor and let me know in the comments if you have other questions that you'd like to ask, if you have other things that you want to look at for that. And I know that some people are a bit allergic to refactoring because there's this fear of breaking things. And what I would say is if the code doesn't solve your current problems, it's already broken. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's really important to keep in mind. There's no reason to be afraid of breaking something that's already broken. It's already, it, yeah, you could make it worse, but uh, that's why you set up different branches. That's why you end up working on it over here and then bring it in once you've been able to test it. It needs to solve your problems. That's the whole point of code. If the code doesn't solve your problems, then guess what? It needs to change. That's just the reality. Um, there's no value in defending code that doesn't work. And um, like I've seen that in some different contexts where people will defend code that doesn't work and be like, hey, it's not worth refactoring that. And it's like, it doesn't work. It just, it doesn't work. Quit, quit defending it, quit, quit making it into this. We can ignore it. You might be able to ignore it for a bit because you have higher priority bugs or issues. But uh, if you can't get past this question, honestly, you need to refactor. That's just a reality. <laughs> so I hope that this helps you out. Hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day and um, and that you take care. Let me know if you have any specific topics that you would like for me to cover. And if you're interested in working with me one on one or talking with me one on one, I have a fiver. I'll link to that down below. And also I do tutoring for web development and for game programming. And you can find me on Wisent for that. And I've got a link to that below as well. Have a fantastic rest of your day and take care.